first down. Be first down and goal for Oklahoma. Opening drive of the game, looking to get on the board. Ramsey with a fullback in front of him. Watch Oklahoma. They will throw to those tight ends as this one's handed off to Corey Avery. Picks up a yard or two across the middle, running back out of Kansas. First game with Oklahoma. Picks up a couple there. It'll be second down and goal. They have new tight ends, too, from the last time we saw them. You know what I said about that? What's that? About throwing the ball to them. Don't. <laughs> Second down and goal. Again, watch those, uh, the, you see the lineman raise their hand, that is an eligible receiver in this league is a tight end position. Richard Davis will use those. Aeneas Ruiz is a tight end on this one. No, no. And it's a fake. Ball kept by the quarterback. That and Ramsey's brought down behind the line of scrimmage by Kwame Bell. Bell, who had the personal foul earlier in this drive, makes a stop for a loss and makes it third down and goal. Mark him down at the five yard line, opening drive of the game. Oklahoma started at their own 12. Would love more than nothing to convert this drive into points. They're five yards away from doing just that. It's third down. Ramsey wants to throw, looks into the no. end zone. It's low and off the mark. It's incomplete. Good coverage by Jermichael Sleepy Williams. Brings up fourth down, and we'll see. We've seen Richard Davis go for it a lot on fourth down, but it looks like actually the quarterback's out there, and now the kicking crew is going to come out. He's going to try for the three. Brett Matthews, the uh, place kicker for Oklahoma. And this kid's got a leg. We saw him a couple weeks ago uh, against Sioux City make a 49-yard field goal. This one's going to be closer to 19. High snap, the placement's down, and the Flying Aces are on the board. So Oklahoma successful on their opening drive. They put three on the board, 11.05 remaining in the first quarter, 3-0 Oklahoma. Well, it'll be good to see the beef offense coming on the field. I know this week in practice a lot and looking really for the running game, trying to, which has been a strong point for us. Uh, two new offensive linemen, we're going to see how they do. Be interesting to see how Richard Davis coaches this game too. We've seen him a lot throughout the year. That was a, a situation where we've seen a lot of times earlier this season he'd go for it on fourth down. This time, elects to get the points, takes the lead, uh, maybe a little bit more conservative. I think he feels a little bit better about his offensive line and his chances of getting the field ball down the field more often and scoring points. Yeah. Well, the old actually, you want every possession you have, you want to get points. And we did stop them three times in a row here. So. So the Omaha defense makes Oklahoma settle for a field goal after allowing them down to the five yard line on a first and goal situation. And the Omaha offense will get a shot. A better start for Oklahoma than two weeks ago where Omaha jumped out in front in a hurry. It was 35 to nothing at halftime before Oklahoma got on the scoreboard. They did not do that until quarter number three. Antonio Bray awaits in the end zone for the kickoff, and they will kick it to him. High end over end kick. Fielded at the goal line. Here goes Bray to the 5, the 10. Makes a move out near the 15-yard line. They tackle him at the 14, and that's where Omaha will start with 10.56 remaining here in the first quarter of play. Antonio Bray, a threat on returns, averaging 16 yards per return. He does have a touchdown. That time he brings it out to the 14. And for the second time this year at Ralston Arena, Derek Bernard takes the field at quarterback for Omaha. Bernard will operate in the gun, Bray in the backfield. Men in motion on the right side, and Bray, or I make that uh, pass is off to King. He's got room up the left side. He's looking for that end zone. Gets down near the goal line. I think he's pushed into the boards. About the two yard line. Nice pass on first down 
Good job by Bernard, recognizes the situation. Looked like he's gonna take off the run. Checked up, found Kane down that sideline. He had the offensive line peeled back, gave him a good block, gave him some more time. Thirty-four yards on the pitch and catch. It's going to be first and goal from the two. Good start for the Omaha offense. We'll see if they can convert on this first and goal situation. Bernard wants to throw and nearly threads yes. the needle. Kane wanted to finish that. The ball is on the turf. He tries to sell it. He's not going to get the call. It's going to be second and goal. Those one bouncers don't work. I was talking to Kane before the game. Officially, he's down for three touchdowns on the season. He insists, or four, he insists he has another one. We're gonna have to go back and check those videos, but he wanted one more right there. He'll do anything to get it, obviously. But not to be that time. Two yards out, it's second down. Under 10 minutes to go, opening quarter here at Ralston Arena. Javon well, Bell oh, in oh, motion, oh. and we've got whistles. Bad snap, he picked it up. Put it be back a down. Legal snap, it looks like. Yeah. He picked it up and put it back down. Can't do that. No. Even if you're trying to fool the defense. Ooh, snap infraction. That'll be five yards against Omaha. Back it up. Second down and goal to go. Seven yards out now. Omaha in the red zone this year, 45%, 21 of 40. That's actually last place in the CIF. Only three touchdowns in red zone situations this year. Here's a little shovel off to Javon Bell. He gets a couple yards. He's tackled at the five to be third and goal. Red zone's been a little bit of an issue, as we mentioned. Last in the CIF, only three touchdowns. Uh, they've settled for some field goals. They'll need at least that to match Oklahoma's opening drive. We'll see what Chuck Wright has for third and goal. Wide out on each side, two up on the line. Men are in motion. Bernard wants to throw, that one's tipped. Yep. And it's incomplete, it's be fourth and goal. And I assume the kicking unit will come out. Chuck Wright looks to the sideline. And uh, no decisions being made. Instead, they're going to send in Clint Solomon for the Omaha Beef on fourth and goal. So Omaha gets down to the two-yard line, first and goal, and they will go for it on fourth and five, trailing Oklahoma three to nothing. Solomon will line up on the left side. Two men in motion is Kane and Javon Bell. They'll throw it to Solomon, one on one. He goes up, touchdown. and he brings it down, yes. double coverage, and it's a touchdown for Clinton Solomon. And that's why the beef went out and got him with the number one pick in the expansion draft. It's six to three, Omaha. How many times over the years have we seen Clinton make catches like Boy, that? Boy, it's nice to see that on this side of the ball for a change. Six years I tried to get him here in Omaha, and he's here. He's here now and he showed why. First play in, they threw it up, jump ball, he went and got it. Six to three Omaha. Arivalo to come in for the extra point. Hitters each. Extra point good. is up and it is good. So Clinton Solomon with the Five yard touchdown strike. And it was kind of interesting how, how that went down. We talked about the expansion draft, or not the expansion draft, the dispersal draft from Texas uh, during the pregame. But Omaha having the best record of the league at that point, actually had the last pick of the first round, which would be number seven, made a trade with Oklahoma, who had the number one pick, moved into that number one, position trading a uh, lineman Kelby Johnson and their number seven pick plus another player down to Enid where Omaha brought in Solomon showing why they felt like they needed that playmaker uh, for the playoff run coming up here hopefully for Omaha 
Uh, showed why right there. He was a known commodity, and uh, they went and got him. Well, he went and played, you know, with the Revolution and played played very well against us the last time. I think he had two touchdown catches. So, yeah, what? it's good to see him in the in the orange and black. I know when uh, he was in here about a month ago, it was our last home game and our last broadcast here on Pluto TV. Uh, he he was running a lot of that slot position and full speed at the line of scrimmage with a snap. And I, I apologize to him when I saw him today because I kept thinking he was off size. And I think we talked about that during the broadcast. We went back to uh, send those video clips to the officials. Guess what? He was on the ball, every single one of those. He was just running that fast at the snap. It is a veteran move, and, uh, and he took advantage of it. Well, high, you know, high motion's a lot like comedy, right? It's the timing. Oh, that was your, that was the joke right there. I got it. <laughs> Checking out that game down in uh, Salina. Sioux City now has jumped out in front 23-19. Midway through quarter number two. Both of those teams with three losses. Omaha will see Salina two of the next three contests. They'll be in Salina a week from tonight, actually for back-to-back -back road games. Then Omaha will go down to Amarillo, and then the next home game two weeks from tonight, excuse me, three weeks from tonight, will be Salina Liberty right here. All the games here on out, huge playoff implications, especially when it comes to home field uh, right. with only seven teams right. left. But we're, you know, we got to keep on keeping them. We're in the driver's seat. We're two up on everybody. No contest in that exhibition game in Albuquerque, Duke City, up in front of North Texas Savages 22 to nothing midway through the first quarter. Seven to three here at Ralston. Omaha converts their first drive of the game. 38 yard drive finished off by a pass to Clinton Solomon for a touchdown from five yards out. Here's Zeke trying for that corner again. Gets the perfect bounce over the wall and into the seats. And they'll spot that one at the five yard line, that's a perfect kick. And we've seen Zeke really uh, get that kick down and getting some into the walls as well. Putting that deep field position oh, for absolutely. the opponents. Absolutely, they got the whole field to go to now. And he's, yeah, he is a master at that. So 7.48 remaining here in quarter number one, 7-3 Omaha. Oklahoma. Took their first drive down the field. Had to settle for three after having first and goal. We'll see what Ray John Ramsey can do with his second drive of the game. Men in motion is going to throw on first down. It's bobbled to complete. Met immediately. A gain of maybe a yard. It's going to be second down and nine. Pass complete to Josh Stewart. Trey Dudley Giles over with a stop immediately. Second down from Marvin Jones defense. Stewart lines up in the backfield again with Ramsey. Good throw again is nearly picked off. Chris Taylor Hawkins comes in, gets his hands on it. And he thought he saw the end zone. He had two interceptions a week ago, including one for a touchdown. He was the CIF player of the week defensively for week number eight. Almost had six more points right there. That, was, that ball got really big in his eyes, and he saw that end zone but couldn't bring it in. I think their, their, off, their passing offense is more, more of a dink and dunk, nothing really much downfield. As we mentioned, third quarterback for Richard Davis in the Flying Aces this year. This is game number four for Ramsey. Ramsey puts the men in motion. Uh, there's some confusion here as the play clock is down to zero. The flags come out. I don't believe they called a timeout. This is going to be a delay of game against Oklahoma. It's going to back them up half the distance. A little bit different offensive set than we've seen them in the first game that they were here. They had two wide receivers on the line, ran it two 
high motion guys. Some had run back, they run short, they just switch back and forth on their on their on their on their routes. It was a little bit different offense. This o is different tonight. Too. Oklahoma started the season with uh, veteran journeyman Joshua Floyd, who was a dual threat and really had to uh, keep you honest. He was very effective. They were up by 17 at one point in that game. Nope. But now Ramsey is incomplete. As the ball is short to Gonzalez, it's going to be fourth down deep in their own territory, and the kicking crew will come out. This will be a long field goal attempt out of the end zone for Brett Mathis. This kid's got a leg. He's been good from 49 yards out. This is going to be closer to about 52. Uh, longer than that. Yeah, he's three yards deep in the end zone at least. So pushing 60, we'll see what he does with it. If he goes for that corner, and he's going for it. We're going to have a return. Perry out of the end zone. Out to the 5, the 10, looking for a block. 15 midfield, 20, 15, 10. Sees the kicker, sees the end zone, still he's fighting. In, he's in. Here's the crowd. Five, five, five touchdown. Oh, wow. <laughs> What's Marvin Jones doing down there? He's somehow on the field. As Chris Perry returns that one 52 yards on the long field goal attempt for a touchdown. And Omaha special teams have scored to increase the lead. You just kind of felt that as he got to midfield with the head of steam that he was going to finish that one off. And here again, but the defense made the stop to make him kick. Chris Perry coast to coast on the kick return. First return for a touchdown this season for Perry. As Arivalo snap is high and they come in for the block. And uh, Bernard's gonna try to see if he can salvage this, run backwards. This is just a conversion. Could still get two points out of this if he finds someone in the end zone. He cannot, it's picked off. No whistles yet, there we go, out of play. The play is dead. Omaha will have to settle for the 10 point lead. A little bit of problem with the snap, a little bit of a high snap, but timing was off just a little bit. And the result was a block. So a high snap, as Kirk said. The, actually, a flag came out late there. We're going to await to see if there's a call there that would result in them retrying that. The flags were at the line of scrimmage, Kirk. But we're into the media timeout. And we're going to have to wait for the promotions to uh, finish up first. James Kerwin's out on the field looking for an explanation. I don't see what they're not happy about. I didn't catch it. Well, it can't be illegal downfield. No way. I mean, you know, they're, they're on the, what, the, the, the two yard line. They certainly weren't running in the end zone to try to catch a pass. Chuck Wright's out there arguing his case as well. We'll have to await the explanation. Marvin Jones looks like he's a, just watching the show. <laughs> but the conversation's with the line judge. And again, the, the penalty flags were where the original snap occurred. But I'm not sure if it was a snap infraction that the penalty was or if it was on the throwback downfield. We'll see if we get an explanation here after the mascots are cleared off the field. We're lining the ball up for a kickoff, so whatever this is, appears is going to be a moot point. We should get one of those passes and we can go to Coco Key. Yeah, you, you'd have a good time out there, I bet. They couldn't throw them up this far, I don't think. <laughs> Cannonball contest, that fun stuff. Reminder, post-game party. Speaking of Coco Keys, is at the Ramada Inn on 73rd and Grover. Excuse me, across the street from the Ramada Inn at the Firewater Grill at 73rd and Grover. Players and coaches and fans will be there hopefully celebrating a victory. 
So far, beef out in front by 10 with 448. Here's the call. So is it unsportsmanlike conduct, as you may have heard? Opposing teams cannot throw the balls into the stands, and that's what they did. This will be a penalty attached after the kick, so Zeke will likely be trying to kick this thing out of play as a 15-yard penalty will be added to it as he was instructed from the sidelines, and this one will go over the wall, which will bring it out to the 25, but they'll add the 15-yard penalty to it, and Oklahoma will start at their own 10-yard line. So Kirk, we saw Oklahoma go down the field on their first drive and stalled out on their second drive. Uh, you mentioned kind of a dink and dunk offense we're seeing so far, but it has been favoring the passing. Not a lot of running so far from Oklahoma as we've seen from them the last three or four games with this quarterback. You get the feeling that Omaha could really take control with another defensive stop here early on here in this contest. Ramsey puts them in into motion, first down. Hands off to Stewart. Stewart across the left side, across the 15, brought down at the 17-yard line. Good for about four or five yards. Pretty good run from where he started. Made the most of that, it'll be second down and five. Four ten and counting, first quarter of play, 13 to three Omaha. Omaha trying to add to a six and one record. The Flying Aces are in the way. This one off the fingertips of Stewart and into the bench, it'll be third down. Kirk, as we said, that first drive systematically, I think maybe woke up Marvin Jones's defense yeah, here as, as they've been uh, forcing the issue here on the last two drives. Uh, first time they'd seen this offense, different from the other time. So they made an adjustment, they stopped them. And we also talked about this is the first time this offensive line has even played together. So entirely new personnel for the Flying Aces. It's third down and six. Omaha trying to get another stop. You wonder if it's four down territory here for Oklahoma. Pass pressure and complete for a first down. Nice job. Finding the open receiver. Oh, they call wow. Gonzalez down. I don't know if he was actually on the turf as he rolled over the defender, which was Trey J Dudley Giles. But the whistle came. They're going to spawn down at the 20. I don't know if we'll see that one again, but it looked like he rolled over him. I'm not sure he was down, Kirk. He didn't think he was down. They never do. Either way, not reversible or reviewable as uh, the whistle played it dead. It's first down inside beef territory at the 20. Ramsey will fake the handoff, keeps it himself. He's got five yards, dives inside the 15, brought down at the 13 yard line. Seven yards on first down for Ramsey. It'd be second down and three. Yeah, they had a trips formation to the left, and they, they ran him out. Everybody downfield. He had he had pretty much an open field to go to. Second down and three. Ramsey parks out the signals. He wants to throw across the middle, complete again. It's gonna be another first down, down to the six yard line. Devin Williams is the receiver out of East Central Oklahoma, 13th catch of the year. It's gonna be first down and goal again for Oklahoma. Second time they've had first and goal here in the opening quarter. The Beef turned them away and Held them to a field goal on their first possession. Final 90 seconds of the first quarter here at Ralston Arena. Ramsey out of the gun, receivers all to his right. 
Here's the toss to the right side, into the wall. Ooh. Almost a late hit as Josh Stewart's the ball carrier. Lost. Maybe a yard on the play. It's to be second down and goal from six yards out. Maybe seven. You know, I don't know in their offense with a short and field like this if they have a have a go-to receiver. The guy that's going to go up and get the ball. I, we'll just have to wait and see. Everything here has been a little short down and out. Opening game, first week of the season here at Ralston Arena. You'll remember Josh Stewart had a heck of a game actually against us. Seemed like he was the go-to receiver that night. Averaging 60 yards per game, he has six touchdowns on the season. We'll see if they go to him here on second and goal. Look like yep. the flying ace is nearly offside. Pressure, and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. It's a sack for the defense. And they were going to go to him on that play. They ran two guys down deep, and he hooked up short. Xavier Peggies came in with the sack. And it's be third down and goal now from 12 yards out, but time is gonna expire here in the first quarter of play. One quarter in the books when we come back, it'll be third down and goal. We'll take a brief timeout. You're watching indoor football, CIF action here on the Omaha Beef Football Network. Back at Ralston Arena, quarter number two, about to begin. Oklahoma trailing by 10. They have a third and goal from the 12-yard line. Trying to get some points here after giving up 13 straight points as they scored a field goal on their opening drive. Back in Salina, Sioux City hanging on 23-22 advantage, late first half of play. Omaha will see Salina next week, Amarillo the week after, Salina again, and then finish off the regular season right here at the Slaughterhouse against our friends from Sioux City. Don't laugh, Kirk. I know, but I know Coach Jones doesn't like Sioux City. No. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> More importantly, though, third down and 12. Here we go. Third and goal. Opening play of the second quarter. Ramsey right there, right there. has a rush, wants to throw, he has a man, it's complete for a touchdown. That was a nice pass as he found Torrance Carr out of Oklahoma State for a touchdown. And Oklahoma strikes back. Really, really, really good rod. He ran down about three yards. He just kind of waited for things to open up and broke it back across the middle. Credit Ramsey stepping up in the pocket. Avoiding that pass rush that was 
collapsing on him and then finds the receiver as we look at it again. You see him step into there, put it right into the slot for six for Oklahoma. Mathis comes in for the point after. Clean snap, the kick is up, and it is good. So four seconds into the second quarter of play, Oklahoma responds with a touchdown of their own, and it's 13 to 10. Omaha out in front. So we talked about, as we have, is, is that the, the kicker, kicker down? Kicker late to get up. I didn't see any contact, but he's favoring that kicking leg. And that would uh, obviously be an issue for Oklahoma. I think it's a cramp is the way that they're working him, Kirk. But we'll have to watch that. Didn't hydrate. <laughs> Kinda hydrated. It is a warm day finally <laughs> here in Omaha. And uh, we'll see what Mathis' condition is moving forward. Yeah, the way the movement does look like a cramp. So some big games coming up here for Omaha to finish the season. Four games after tonight, two on the road, two at home. All four of them are teams with playoff implications. Two against Salina, a home and away. Currently in second place tied with Sioux City, depending on tonight's matchup. And then Sioux City, as we mentioned, to finish. And then that Amarillo game, currently they are in first place in the CIF South. Omaha at the moment has a two-game lead on everybody in the loss column. And I don't think we could talk about how important it is to maintain that lead and have those playoff games all the way through the championship here at the Slaughterhouse. Well, we're definitely in the driver's seat. And I know we try to impress that all the time. I mean, we talk about it in practice and all those other things. We've, we've never, we're in a good position. And I think with, you know, we got, we got some veteran leadership and so on and so forth. And it's our hope that they aren't gonna let anything like that happen. Omaha has not won seven regular season games. It's been two years uh, that seven and five team two seasons ago, 2017, that team did make a playoff run and make it to the Champions Bowl where they fell to the Texas Revolution. Only had seven regular season wins twice in the last five years. You have to go back six seasons. Actually, when James Curran was assistant head coach to when Omaha had 10 regular season wins, the first year in what was then the CPIFL, the first year at Ralston Arena, Omaha was 10 and two. They fell in the semifinals of the conference championship to Wichita here at Ralston Arena. That championship's eluded Omaha. It's season number 20. And Omaha fans would love to see it happen this season. Most importantly, one game at a time, have to continue successful here tonight. And a backup kicker is gonna come in, so Mathis will not be able to kick off. As a kick Bray. is nicely fielded by Bray at the goal line. He's looking for room. He wants to repeat what Perry did. Across midfield to the 20. He catches part of that board in front of the Omaha bent. And they're gonna mark him out of bounds. It looks like at the 19 yard line. 31 yard return for Antonio Bray. And Omaha once again will start in Oklahoma field position with a three point lead. Devin Williams, a wide receiver, actually came in for that kickoff. Not bad for a wide receiver, nice high end over end kick. We'll see if uh, Mathis is able to return after what appeared to be cramps after that extra point. Bernard is gonna hand it off. Bray across the 15. He's good for five yards. And it'll be second down and five. Antonio Bray has had a nice season for Omaha out of the backfield. Sterling College, he's played for Duke City in the CIF. Only five foot eight, 170 pounds. We talked about he's elusive, averaging over five yards a carry here in the 2019 season. All the wideouts on the left side for Bernard, they'll do a toss sweep to Bray on that left side. He fights inside the 10. Could be near first down yardage. 
that size is really an advantage in this offense behind those big old offensive linemen. They see a little crack and bingo. It's be third and about a yard. We'll see what Chuck Wright has in the short yardage package. He's gonna do two wideouts on each side, empty backfield. Bernard wants to throw on third down. Looking to the end zone and he throws it into coverage. It's picked off. Brought out to the five, now the 10. Bernard goes down and ends it himself. And Oklahoma, a big defensive stop as Ivan King gets that one. He had Antonio Bray open against the board, didn't see his safety valve there, instead tried to force it in the end zone, and King was there. Looked like at least double coverage as we watch this one again. You can see all the white shirts in the end zone, and uh, just floats one in there, and Oklahoma gets a turnover. At least with double coverage. Those defensive backs saw him motion to that guy. They knew where he was, he was going to go. So big opportunity for Oklahoma, only trailing by three here in the second quarter of play. Omaha has really turned around their turnovers in the last several games. They are now plus 11 in turnovers on the season. They were minus four or five games ago. Scramble by Ramsey out to the 10, and he is brought down into the boards. Robert Cuba comes in late. Initial contact was made by Sleepy Williams. And it's to be second down and long. That pressure, they were looking wide open. Carter's running that little drag route. You see it, literally, he hesitates and comes across the middle. He was open again. We had good pressure on the quarterback, though. Second down at the 12 yard line. And it's complete across the 15. Be another third down for Oklahoma. Oklahoma six in the lead on third down efficiency coming into the night, 21 of 70. Six in third down efficiency, fifth and fourth down efficiency. It's third down and four. Here's Ramsey, he has a man, it's complete. That will be a first down. Completed once again into Omaha territory. Got one Devin Williams on the receipt being end of that. And we have an injured player, that's Robert Griffin. That'd be a huge injury if Griffin is out. Arm or a shoulder. Let's see if we get a look at that again. Robert Griffin, a new ad for Richard Davis, the big six foot six, 330 pound offensive lineman out of Baylor. He actually was selected with the number seven pick in the recent dispersal draft from the Texas Revolution. That was actually Omaha's pick. That's the trade that Omaha and Oklahoma made. And that's what Richard Davis did with that as Griffith he is walking off the field, and as you said, it looks like he's favoring that arm. And we're gonna have some talking going on. Kwame Bell and uh, the defensive coordinator, Marvin Jones. Well, that was the guy that was in front of Kwame now. And Griffin's still gonna yell. Marvin Jones wants a personal foul. We need to watch the situation. Uh, that was part of the jawing before the game was between some of the players we just saw in that. Gonna have to go back and see if the injury resulted in uh, what kind of play was going on there. But back to action, it's first down and 10 inside Omaha territory. Omaha hanging on to a three point lead. 11 and a half to go here in the opening half. Ramsey wants to throw again. He's gonna go deep up the sideline and throws it into the seats. It's incomplete to be second down. And we got more jawing going on. Kwame Bell is in the middle of it once again. Second down. 
Teams that play each other three times in a season start to get some uh, history with each other and uh, get to know each other pretty well. And uh, we're seeing a lot of talking going on between the benches right now. Second down and 10 for Oklahoma. Here comes a rush, they drop back, they try to set up the screen we talked about, how they will throw to those tight end linemen. They tried to do it right there, but it's incomplete. As Kirk Heyer will always say, you don't pass yes. to fat guys, even though there was legal as they tried to find Brandon Bishop. All offensive linemen that played for Oklahoma coming into tonight's game have at least one reception. Brandon Bishop joined them this week. Obviously did not get one there. Maybe have new hands for this game. Third down and 10. 10 minutes to go here, second quarter. Oklahoma will go deep, oh. wide open, touchdown. Josh Stewart, we talked about him. Wide receiver out of Oklahoma State, got past Chris Perry in an easy throw. And Oklahoma flying aces are back out in front. Talking to Richard Davis before the game, as Brent Mathis is back in to kick for Oklahoma. Mathis, extra point is good, and Oklahoma's back up by four. Talking to Richard Davis before the game, talked to him before the previous two games, and he, you know, kind of acted like that, you know, hey, take it easy on us, you know, you yeah. know, don't score too many points. Tonight, he actually kind of acted like he thought he, he had a better team and was going to provide a good contest. So far, that's what we're seeing here. Oh, yeah, definitely a better team. Definitely a better team, and uh, giving the beef a game, a better game here at Ralston Arena than they did down in Enid two weeks ago. If you're with us in the opening game of the season, it was week number one. Different quarterbacks for both teams. Joshua Floyd for Oklahoma, Seth Sawita. His only start for the Omaha Beef was that opening game. Oklahoma actually controlled a lot of that game and led by 17 in the second half of play. Omaha had to score very late in the game to take the lead, and, and really Oklahoma had some chances to close that thing out. But Oklahoma fell to the Omaha B 59-55 in a come-from-behind win for Omaha in week one. That was back on March 23rd, nearly two months ago, and as you said, two completely different teams out here tonight. Oklahoma on their third quarterback of the season. Omaha on their fourth quarterback of the season, if you remember, actually started four different quarterbacks in the opening four games. Weeks one, two, and three started rookie quarterbacks who were making their first ever indoor starts. They did get through that two and one with the only loss being to Sioux City. 43-32 in week number two. We've got a good one going so far here. Checking in in Salina, Sioux City. And Salina are at halftime. It is 30 to 22. Bandits out in front. And if you're following along the exhibition game, Duke City out in front of North Texas, 40 to six midway through the second quarter. That's all the action this weekend in the CIF. Omaha travels to line a week from tonight. Math is back in for kickoff duties and it's a ground ball. It's gonna be fielded in Oklahoma territory. Calvin Phillips is a running back and he's gonna take off. Uh, the ball came loose. He was into the board though. Mathis with a squib. I don't know if that's because of the, you know, the injury that he sustained. He couldn't kick it a full length of the field, but 
He picked the wrong guy, Calvin Phillips, the running back, who picked it up in Oklahoma Territory. Nearly returned it all the way, but it's going to make it first down and goal for Omaha. Looked like he was kind of aiming it for one of the up men. That, again, the wrong one right there, Calvin Phillips. More than happy to get his hands on the ball, and it's going to be first and goal. About three yards out for Omaha. It's trailing by four. Bernard, good throw right across the right middle. There, That's Devon Bell. It's a touchdown for Omaha. Wide Easy pitch and catch, ball. one play drive, and the Beaver back out in front. Javon Bell found his way to the board in the middle of the end zone and brings that one in. Javon Bell with his fifth touchdown catch of the season. Arivalo back in, extra point. Kick is up and it is good, and Omaha back out in front by three. 9.32 remaining here in the first half of play. Omaha 20, Oklahoma 17. And uh, those are the drives you expect a team like this to make you pay for when they give it to you that deep in the, in the field, and they did. Well, not much rest for the defense, so. So it'll be interesting as the Omaha defense comes back on the field. We saw how the last drive was and uh, get a little chippy with the Omaha defense and the Oklahoma offense out there. Robert Griffin left in the last series. And uh, Kwame Bell is becoming a target. I'm not sure if he's bringing that on himself, but he seems to be involved in, uh, in a lot of interaction with Oklahoma. We'll want to watch that develop throughout the rest of this game. You know, he's an old vet. He's setting him up for something. It's going to have to be tonight because this should be the last time Omaha sees Oklahoma this season. Again, Oklahoma looking for their first win on the field. They are 1-6. and six. They do have the forfeit victory, so they're technically on a one-game winning streak. But have not won a game on the field this year. Richard Davis would like more than anything to get that. Got another uh, game scheduled against Texas, which will get a forfeit win next week, but then face Duke City, Sioux City, and Amarillo. So it's going to be a tough road to try to get one of those victories for the Flying Aces. But they're in a game here, trailing by three. Zeke is going to try that bouncer. It's fielded at the four yard line, out to the 10. Need coverage, the 15, out near the 20. Gonzalez on the return. And Oklahoma will have it at their own 19 yard line. So we've seen a couple of uh, decent drives from Oklahoma. Saw a pretty good big play on the last series. We'll see what they do. You said, Kirk, that they were doing a lot of dinking and dunking early on. Did break loose with a long touchdown pass on the last drive. Omaha may have been cheating a little bit based on the offense that they had seen early in this game. We'll see if Marvin Jones makes some adjustments going forward. Robert Griffin is back in at right guard for Oklahoma. We'll watch that matchup with Kwame Bell. And it is complete to Gonzalez. Cross midfield, and he's got some wheels as he continues to fight near the 10 yard line finally pushed into the boards and it's gonna be a first down for Oklahoma they're gonna spot him at the 11 yard line she'll be first down for Oklahoma Coach Davis talks to his quarterback, great John Ramsey. Rookie season in indoor of East Central Oklahoma. Did a good job picking up the game in four games this year. Gonna fake the handoff, he keeps it. Oh, and he takes a hit. 
as Xavier Pegas comes in and uh, Des Bryant a little, or Desmond Reed a little but that's what, that's ginger really coming up. Only about their fourth running play in the first half, and he's had two. That's a hard earned yard for Ramsey. That's the type of hit that makes you think before you tuck it under and take off again as a quarterback. He's second down to nine. Four wide set for the Flying Aces. Ramsey to throw and he throws nearly intercepted. It's tipped up. Taylor Hawkins on the coverage. Sleepy Williams tried to get the deflection. Ball falls to the ground, It'll be third down to nine. They do a lot in their offense, trying to set some up on one side and then coming to the short guy on, on the opposite side. Let's see what Richard Davis has in store. You have to wonder on their field goal situation now as well with Mathis, how good his leg is. Might be four down territory at this point for Oklahoma. Play clock's down to two to one. They just get the snap off. Okay. Ramsey right there. throws over to the board. It's complete, but he's only going to get a yard or two. And it's going to be fourth down. So as we mentioned, Mathis, the field goal kicker, after the last extra point, he says he's good to go. He wants to come out. They're going to bring him out and try it. This will be interesting. We'll find out real quick how good that leg is. It's going to be about a 24-yard attempt to tie the game up. Ramsey's the holder. He'll spot the ball at the 14-yard line. He's about 21 yards with the end zone. Placement is down, the kick is up, and that one is good. And we're deadlocked at 20 with 5.43 remaining here in the first half of play. So apparently the cramp worked itself out, Kirk. Went over and had a little Gatorade. It's all about hydration. 20 apiece, 5.43 remaining, coming up at halftime. Arson City, Kirk. It's a band. Don't give me that look. I've heard them. <laughs> Local band favorite will be uh, performing a concert at halftime. We will uh, let you enjoy that action between halves. One also, of our, one of our longtime Rempros is a drummer. Who's that? Stevie. Well, there you go. Yeah. Wonder if that's how that all kind of went down, yeah, huh? I'm thinking so. Huh, how about that? You'll notice it's military night, heroes night here for Belmont Beef at Ralston Arena, wearing special uniforms once again, the, the flag draped Omaha Beef black jerseys will be available for auction. After the game, all funds going to charity here tonight. 20 points apiece. Here at Prairie Flower Casino Field at Ralston Arena. Todd Walkenhorst, there's Kirk Heyer. Regular season game number eight for Omaha for the 2019 season. Find themselves in a ball game against Oklahoma Flying Aces who come into tonight one and six. We're tied up at 20. Mathis back in, kicking off for Oklahoma. He's going to keep it on the ground again. It bounces up against the wall and out of play. There'll be no return, but Omaha will have decent field position as they spot it at the 17-yard line. Both teams have all three timeouts left here in the first half. Derek Bernard brings the offense back out.
first down and 10 from the 17. Clint Solomon on the left side in motion now. As they give it off to Calvin Phillips, he tries to fight up the middle, still on his feet, dropped backwards. I think he's gonna have a loss as he reestablishes forward progress. They will mark him down at the 15. That's gonna be a loss of two. Second down and 12. Empty set for Omaha. Bernard will throw on second down and tries to find Solomon. It's off his hands incomplete. He was wide open between two defenders. Third down for Omaha, it's third down and 12. They need to get to the Oklahoma 23 yard line. Bernard on third down, sidearm throw, finds Bell. That's gonna be good for first down yardage as he gets inside the 20 yard line of Oklahoma brought down at the 19. Good for 14 yards, another Omaha first down as we're under four minutes to go here in the first half of play. A little up tempo now for Omaha as they get back on the ball quickly. Bernard wants to throw and it's off the hands of Solomon and oh, should have been picked off. Oklahoma had a couple opportunities at it. Falls to the ground, that's back to back passes off of Clinton Solomon's hands. And he's hit himself in the head as he knows he should have brought that one in. It'll be second down for Omaha. Omaha trying a little up tempo. As the clock continues to run towards the three minute mark. Phillips is gonna line up in the backfield. as Omaha only has seven players, I believe. Oh, nope. What is the infraction? Robert Griffin's on the field. And uh, the officials are gonna talk this over. He should not be on the field first off, so there should be a infraction. As players have come off the bench for Oklahoma, the officials will discuss it, see what we have going on here. Call Calvin Phillips for unsportsmanlike conduct. Meanwhile, players came off the Oklahoma bench. It's going to be a 15 yard penalty and make it second and 25. Didn't see what happened. It had to be verbal because the play had not snapped. Well, he, Coach Davis was kind of in his face a little bit too. Back it up to the Omaha 16. They weren't talking about holiday plans, I'm sure. So they'll hand off to Phillips after the penalty, let him try to get it back. And he's, you can see he's uh, running with some aggression as he's back inside Oklahoma territory. Got the majority of the penalty back, will be third down, about 13. Omaha has to get inside the 10, they're back on the ball, they'll look for it right here. They throw to Kane Farkerson, he's knocked out of bounds at the 16 yard line, but it's gonna be fourth down. And Omaha is gonna have to send out the field goal unit to try to reclaim this lead as we approach the two minute mark of the first half. So a big personal foul, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, stalls a drive out for Omaha. And they're gonna have to try to settle for a field goal be a 31 yard attempt for Zeke Arivalo. Kick is up there. and yes. it is good. 
Four for 11 on the season on field goals. And he gives Omaha a three point advantage with 141 remaining here in the first half of play. Zeke's been good, especially inside of about 40 yards. And we'll come back and give you the final minute 41. You're watching B Football on the Omaha B Football Network. All this month. Back at Ralston Arena. Omaha reclaimed the advantage. Arivala will kick it off. He puts it back oh, right over the board. And he is trying for the long return, but that's going to actually bring the ball out to the 25 yard line for Oklahoma with 137 remaining here in the first half. It's going to give him great field position with all three timeouts. Almost, almost dropped it at the bottom there. So when the ball goes over the wall without touching the field of play, it comes out to the 25 yard line. And Oklahoma has been efficient offensively. 20 points here in the first half of play. Two wideouts on each side for Oklahoma. Short throwing on first down. It's complete once again. Torrance Carr, the ball carrier, complete down to the 17 yard line, be second down and free as we approach the one minute warning. See if we get another snap off before the one minute warning timeout. And they will not. And we have a stoppage of play for the one minute warning and we'll come back for the final 60 seconds. It's Omaha 23, Oklahoma 20. You're watching Omaha B Football and the Omaha B Football Network. Of course you're gonna go for the guy in the Nebraska shirt, aren't you, huh? Come on down. Hey, we're wearing black shirts tonight too, just so you know, right? All right, let's get all of our contestants right here at midfield. Come on up here, guys. All right, Alex, what they're gonna do is they're gonna roll three dice. The highest cumulative score will be tonight's winner, Alex. Go for it. All right, we got a total score of nine. Now, folks, we're going to be doing a lot of Back and roll. 
Carlson Arena. Final 60 seconds of the first half of play. We got a good ball game here tonight. As Omaha Beef are out in front of Oklahoma, 23 to 20, Oklahoma driving. It'll be second down and four as they are in Beef territory. Both teams have all three timeouts left and 60 seconds is an eternity in indoor football, Kirk. Yeah, it is. And that, they're, set, they're setting Carr up. There's a, he's been wide open on that delay, that little drag or what, whatever, going with the catch and the run. But he's going to break it off. We've seen uh, some receivers find some space here tonight. Uh, lots up across the middle is where they're finding it. They, as you mentioned, they break off those routes and, uh, and, and find that opening across the middle. We did see him get beat once up across the wall for a touchdown earlier this half, but uh, the plays have been there so far. But we've also seen a lot of pressure from the defensive line on the quarterback, Ramsey. He's handled it pretty well. Yeah, he has, but he's always got that safety valve. There's always a guy standing on the wall. So wait, they've, they've run the defenders off, and they just he's, he's just stopping. So Omaha 23-20 out in front of the Flying Aces. Omaha looking for their third victory in three games against Oklahoma. And if anybody who follows football at all knows playing any team three times in one season and winning all three is a difficult task. That's what Omaha is trying to achieve here. It's second down and four. Ramsey looking across the middle, and there it is again. That's complete. It's a touchdown to Torrance Carr, and Oklahoma is back out in front. We just talked about the space up the middle, Kirk. Yeah, yeah they set him up well for that. It's a 14-yard completion for a touchdown. And with 55 seconds left, Oklahoma will try to add the extra point and jump back in front by four. Well, we gotta hope we can get a score before halftime and then get the ball to start the second half again. Mathis is in and the kick is up and it is good. 55 seconds remaining here in the first half of play. Oklahoma out in front of Omaha, 27 to 23. As you mentioned, Kirk, Omaha will get the ball here with 55 seconds to go. That's a lot of time. They do have all three timeouts. Also traditional football timing rules now in place under the one minute warning. So stoppages for incomplete passes and when the ball goes out of bounds. And then Omaha, after deferring the opening kickoff and winning the coin toss, will get the ball back to start the second half. So a couple big series forthcoming here for the beef as uh, I don't think they underestimated Oklahoma, but uh, Oklahoma putting together a heck of a ball game and also plus one in the turnover battle so far tonight. And we've had some costly penalties. Penalties was really a story early on in the season as uh, Omaha had problems with that. But it's something that they really corrected in the last few games but uh, it came in play here tonight. 15 yard penalties on a 50 yard field hurt the heck out of you. So Mathis to kick off 27, 23 lead for the flying aces. Antonio Bray back deep for Omaha, and this one will go over the wall, so I guess the leg has recovered from Mathis, but he made the mistake Omaha just did, and this ball will be placed at the 25-yard line as we see more jawing going on on the field <laughs> for a touchback. But Omaha's gonna get the ball at the 25 with a full allotment of timeouts and 55 seconds to go.
Yeah, that kick was a line drive. There was no, no thought. You know, indoor football, lots of times the kicker, the kicker that can drop the ball right down in the end zone on the end line. Uh, that high kick. Bernard out of the gun will throw on first down. It is complete to Javon Bell. First down inside the five, lunges for the goal line. And it's a score, touchdown Omaha. And the beef are back out in front. One play drive the second time tonight. They have had a one play drive for a touchdown and with 48 seconds to go, Omaha back in front. And as we said, 60 seconds is a long time in indoor, Kirk. As we see the second score, second touchdown in fact, in 12 seconds <laughs> since the one minute warning. Omaha missed an extra point in the first quarter. Otherwise, Zeke has been perfect. It was a, a high snap that was blocked. We'll see if he can hit this one as this one is up and it is good. And now 48 seconds remaining. The Beef are back in front by 330 to 27. Well, that missed extra point also revolved, <laughs> resulted in a 15 yard penalty against us too. So now we've seen both of the last two kickoffs go over the wall and give that great field position that both teams have taken advantage of here on the last two drives. You assume that they will attempt not to do that. Boy, we got a lot of talking going on as you see there, right across the glass. There is a glass partition. If you're familiar with Ralston Arena, it's the hockey boxes is where the teams are, but uh, a pane of glass in between. It doesn't take much to lean over. There's a lot of talking and the officials are over there trying to keep this thing. It's one of those games that you really got to keep it under control because once you lose the control, it's tough to regain. They just have to use sign language. One, one option. So we'll see if Omaha can keep this one in play. And how Zeke will approach, or how he's instructed to approach. Yeah, we're 48 seconds to go here in the first half. Should be a fun second half as Omaha, we said we'll get the ball first. They're trying to get win number seven. A more difficult contest than a, two weeks ago in Enid. This time, low line drive kick, and there's the bounce that he wants over the board, and this will spot the ball at the five yard line. Zeke celebrates as he should with that kickoff. No time off the clock, 48 seconds to go. Omaha out in front, 30 to 27. Again, all teams have all timeouts here as we approach the end of the first half. Halftime is gonna be a little bit longer than normal. Arson City, the special halftime entertainment will perform a halftime concert. We'll let you enjoy that as much as you can here on Pluto TV. And then come back for what should be a heck of a second half if the first half was any indication. These two teams are again at it here tonight at the Slaughterhouse. First down, Oklahoma from their own five yard line. Ramsey will throw again. It's complete across the 10 yard line. Good for six yards is Josh Stewart. Clock will continue to run under 40 seconds. Be second down and four. Oklahoma does have all three timeouts. Throws again and it's complete out near midfield. They're gonna say he was driven into the wall. That will stop the clock. It'll be a first down for Oklahoma at the 23 yard line of Omaha. Clock frozen at 26 seconds. Omaha will have first down, or excuse me, Oklahoma will have first down. Again, all three timeouts remaining for Richard Davis. Empty backfield. Right there, Ramsey right there, right there. will throw down the far side. It's incomplete intended receivers, Josh Stewart who already has a touchdown tonight, and we have another injured flying ace on that offensive line. Same guy. Number Robert two. Griffin again. Man, he's getting beat up. So 
So we have a stoppage for the injury with 21 seconds remaining here. And this time it looks like it's his leg, Kirk. Still have a lot of talking going on. I see William Dent doing some John. Well, him and Griffin were teammates, teammates. until uh, yeah. the team disbarred a couple weeks ago. He's going to come out and check on his former teammate. help uh, Griffin up. Warren Dent is out there to help as well and uh, it is going to be a leg that he is favoring to get off that field. And if he is unable to continue again this will be a big loss. He's already got that arm. They look like they put a brace or bandage which is what he left for previously. Robert Griffin's going to be done for now and replaced. Braylon Hyder comes in, the rookie out of SMU, to take the place of Griffin. It's going to be second down and 10 for Oklahoma. 20 seconds remaining here in the first half. Ramsey pump fakes now, throws downfield and throws it out of play. Good coverage by Omaha. But there's a flag back where the ball was thrown. And I think we're going to have a hold against the Flying Aces. So far, been a pretty penalty free game. Only a couple penalties so far. They've been big ones, but this will be holding against Oklahoma. I assume you well, back them up. Most of the chop. No point declining it. Might as well put him back with 16 seconds. And they will push him back. And that will be a... Yeah, that was a, that's a tough goal. New guy comes in. He's working against one of the best defensive linemen in the league. And he had to hold him right away. So Kwame went to work on him. More importantly, it's 10 yards away from the goal line and only 16 seconds remaining now in the first half. So Omaha could tend to move them back and try to run this clock out. Definitely try to keep Oklahoma out of field goal range. Watch for Oklahoma to use a timeout immediately after this play. Watch Kwame to set him up coming inside. Ramsey wants to go downfield. He has the ball. Caught again inside the 10. The tackle's not made. Tries to make a move. He's brought down at the 6 o'clock. Runs down to 5. There's the timeout. Oklahoma's going to have a decision to make, though, as it'll be first and goal from 6 yards out, but only 5 seconds remaining. Might have time for a quick play and then a second, but you're going to have to choose wisely here, Kirk. Gonzalez. On the reception, once again, he's had a nice first half out of Texas A&M. But it'll be first down and goal, and what's Richard Davis going to do? Falls at the six-yard line, trailing by three. You know Oklahoma has got the mentality of nothing to lose, Kirk. So they'll definitely be going for it. We've seen a lot of success in the middle with those slants. We'll see if they go to that quick slant. If it's incomplete, you might get the chance at that second play. Formation we've seen all night repeatedly from Oklahoma. Two wideouts on each side. And here we go, men in motion. 
Ramsey throws quickly and it's broken up, incomplete. Taylor Hawkins on the coverage and it only took two seconds, three seconds remaining. Trying to go to Carr, they ran him off and he stayed went short. He's definitely their go-to guy. Oklahoma does have two timeouts if they want to talk about it, and they will use one here to try to set a play up. Bicker call by Oklahoma to settle the crowd down a little bit, but get your play in. Kickers on the field. So Brent Mathis comes in. Here's they will go for a field goal. This is a a little more conservative than we've seen, but Richard Davis content to go into the locker room, possibly tied up, which isn't a bad call, no. especially when you're giving the ball to the other team out of halftime. So we'll see if Mathis, from 29 yards out, can tie this up going into halftime. Here's a snap, the kick is up and it is no good. He missed to the right, and time has expired here in the first half. Well, we're As they unpile the bodies, boy, a lot of action again in that line of scrimmage. What's going on down there, Kirk? Dog pile. That is a dog pile. No love lost in the first half between the beef and the flying aces. And we have hit halftime here at Prairie Flower Casino Field at Ralston Arena. The beef are out in front, 30 to 27. Stay tuned, halftime. Festivities will include a concert from local band Arson City, and when we come back, should have a heck of a second half between these two teams. 30 to 27, you're watching the Omaha Beef Football Network.
Welcome to the Ralston Arena as we celebrate the 20th season of your Omaha Beach. Welcome to the Roll. Welcome back to Ralston Arena as we prepare for half number two. Todd Wachenor's there, there's Kirk Heyer, and boy, that was a first half, right? Boy, it sure was, you know. <laughs> it, it, what, kickoff return a, a, on the first possession, long pass for a touchdown. Really, uh, we haven't seen much of a running game tonight from, from what we thought we was going to see. No, we haven't, and uh, Oklahoma has favored the air attack since uh, the last quarterback change and, and we've seen that tonight we'll see how the defense Marvin Jones adjusts to that going forward as it looks like they're gonna keep that but what we've also seen from Oklahoma the first couple times we've seen them is they do make adjustments offensively Richard Davis good enough coach is gonna come out probably show a different look as he gets started let's well, look let's look around the CIF real quick before we get started in the second half Salina out in front of Sioux City 50 to 47 651 remaining in Salina, and then if uh, just for fun you're watching that exhibition action, Duke City getting a glorified scrimmage in tonight against North Texas, 85 to six in the third quarter. Back to this game, important game here tonight, three points, Omaha gets the ball first. We saw a lot of tempers flaring though in that first half. We saw the officials trying to keep control. We saw some uh, personal fouls for uh, sportsmanlike -like conduct and uh, it's gonna be a, a, a handful for Vernon and company to keep keep this thing sane. They are too, you know. And here again, always the biggest adjustments at halftime. What we got got to see is uh, the the beef defense um, not letting you know being able to cover that stuff over the middle, those little drag routes, that little short stuff. Um, it's something. That hopefully, hopefully that they'll be they will be able to to make some adjustment to, uh, but really that offense is the same as what we've seen from them, but just out of a little bit different sets. Well, well, we saw a lot, especially across the middle, look like there was obviously somebody not in place. I assume that's an adjustment that uh, Coach Jones is going to try to address with his personnel. Well, you know, and that's what they're doing is they're, they're running, they're running the deep routes, and then they're just letting the guy stand. He's, he's going down, standing against the wall, and then coming, breaking back across the middle. And uh, obviously the guys, you know, they're playing zone defense. They go to the, their midpoint of their zone, and uh, their midpoint of the zone is a little bit far down the field. CIF fans probably saw this as a uh, uh, an easy game for Omaha, but... So far, it's been anything but as the beef go into second half ahead 30 to 27. Math is to get us started here in the second half. Antonio Bray back deep. This one's going to bounce and hit the wall, and they do call it. Chris Perry tried to pick it up. He would have had some room to run, but it hits the wall at the 10 yard line, and that's where it'll be blown dead. So, Derek Bernard had a decent first half. Uh, did have the one interception, which uh, was kind of a, a big, it was a point where Omaha started to feel like they're getting some control of the game, but Oklahoma all of a sudden gets the turnover, scores off those points, or scores points off that turnover, and uh, finds themselves in a contest now. And some very uncharacteristic drops by Clinton Solomon. He had two in the first half, but also an outstanding catch on the first ball thrown to him for a touchdown, the first touchdown of the game for Omaha. Here's Derek Bernard. This is a designed run. He tucks it under. There's the first down across midfield. A spin move. 
15, 10, lowers the shoulder, gets a few more. And he's inside the 10 yard line. It'll be first down and goal for Omaha to start the second half. Good adjustment. Derek Bernard, we know that uh, he can run and that was a design run all the way as he uh, took a few steps back and then took off. And a big gain. 32 yards for Derek Bernard on the first play of the second half. First and goal, Omaha at the eight yard line, trying to add to a three point lead. Opening minutes of the second half. They'll stack the right side for Bernard. Javon Bell will go in motion along with Raspberry. Handoff is to Bray. Bray tries to find some room and he's pushed into the board hard. Boy, we could hear that one up here. But he gets right back up after a short gain on the play. It'll be second and goal. Good stretch by the defense. There really wasn't a cutback for him. Omaha six and one on the 2019 season. Oklahoma one and six. They will have another bye week slash uh, forfeit win next week against Texas. It will be a home game, so they will face the North Texas Savages. But right now, trying to get their first victory. And look at that late pass. It is to Kane Farkerson. Was he over the line of scrimmage is my question, Kirk. Yeah. Uh, no flag on the play, but that's what I'd be wondering. He was running towards the line of scrimmage and then threw it up at the last minute, kind of a basketball type pass. Left-handed. Left-handed <laughs> nonetheless. Good for a touchdown to Kane. And uh, I think Richard Davis is going to challenge that play. And I think it's exactly what we thought. We're going to see how close he was to that line of scrimmage. So what he's going to be challenging is whether he's across the line of scrimmage. He did look like he slid a little bit to his left. Line of scrimmage. I believe it was the nine yard line. Is that correct, Kirk? Yeah. So we will. Vernon Brakefield and company will check it out. So they. We'll go into the timeout and they'll review that play and that's exactly what they're going to be looking at here is whether he was over the line of scrimmage when he made that pass. As you mentioned, Kirk, it was kind of a, he did a little slide and then he threw with his left hand and then pushed it forward. And as we've discussed a couple times, Kirk, throughout the season, uh, when it comes to a line of scrimmage or any line that they're trying to evaluate, you don't have the cameras necessarily in the correct position to see exactly where those right. where those uh, plays are at. It's not across the field. It's, it's more not from a straight the line. Zone, yeah. So without the camera on that line of scrimmage, it's going to have to be significant for them to overturn it, but it might be. We'll see. The first thing that I saw was I thought he was over the line of scrimmage. And Richard Davis is going to try and challenge that as well. Maybe he fumbled it forward. So they're taking a close look at this. Which could be a penalty, what, illegal forward pass and a loss of down. The illegal forward pass would back it up, and yes, it'd be loss of down and make it third down and goal if that's the way the penalty goes. Right now, it's 
So they've made their decision. And we'll go down and get the word. So close enough, Kirk, and you know, again, it, that might be one of those things. It's just a matter of where that camera was and if you could actually see where he was in a straight line with the line of scrimmage, it's tough to see. Yeah. So the touchdown stands for Omaha. It's a nine point lead now and Zeke will come in to try to add the extra point. High snap again, it is down, but the kick is up and it is good. Money. 10 point lead now for Omaha. 37-27 and Omaha did exactly what they needed to do is come out on that opening drive and get points off points. of the curve. Yeah. So a two possession lead now for Omaha and now it's gonna really come back to that defense to try to get that stop. Only really one defensive stop in that first half, which is kind of unusual. This team is only giving up 34 points per game. And they gave up 27 in the first half. Yep. So uh, we'll see what kind of changes we see here. Here again, that first drive of the second half, just like the one in the first half, where it's two or three play drive, but long, a long, long play and then the, then the short pass to the end zone for the touchdown. So it didn't take much time off the clock. Two weeks ago, Omaha had a very successful first half down Enid. They scored 35 in the first half, took a 35 to nothing lead into the locker room. But the third quarter belonged to Oklahoma. They had the ball most of the, the quarter as they scored a touchdown on the opening drive. Uh, dropped an onside kick, got a safety, and uh, made some adjustments where they got back into the game. Maybe never made a serious threat at it, but they definitely made it interesting. And just like in game number one and, and any other Oklahoma games you've seen this year, this is a team that will adjust and, and come and do some different things in half number two. Let's see where Zeke wants to place this one. Gonzalez awaits for it. It's going to be a bouncer. A bounce. oh. Doesn't get to the wall. It's fielded upfield at the 10. Out to the 15. Brought down at the 19-yard line. It's Corey oh, Avery. Oklahoma now, their largest deficit of the game, trailing by 10. 12.49 remaining here in the third quarter will get their opening possession of the second half. Well, this is where we uh, have seen some tension throughout the first half is the Oklahoma offense and the Omaha defense. Robert Griffin no longer in the game for Oklahoma. He is on the bench. Brandon Bishop also out of the game as well. Two guys are declaring eligible on the line of scrimmage. I don't know if the officials saw that, but both the left and right guards raised their hand. We'll see what they do to keep it on the ground. That's a new play. And tackled in the air after a gain of two or three is Devin Williams. To be second down, about seven. That's probably only their fifth running play of the game. Have not run a lot, so that, that's a change already. And something else that we talked about, we only saw it attempted once, but they do like to use those tight ends. Left side, Ruiz declares himself eligible this time. At some point, they'll take a shot with one of them. It won't be on this play on second down. They'll go downfield, and again, it's Gonzalez. They were tied up, contact in the end zone. But no flag as Taylor Hawkins was on the coverage. And it's be third down and long. So a big opportunity for Omaha coming out of the locker room, trying to take control of this game. They score on the opening possession. And now try to come up with a three and out defensively to grab the momentum of this contest. Ball spotted at the 22. Wide out on the right side. Two more in the backfield will join them. Ramsey looks downfield. It's complete. That's going to be good for a first down. Down to the beef 19-yard line. And Torrance Carr out of Oklahoma State 
with the big catch. We talked about in the first half, Oklahoma towards the league bottom in third and fourth down conversions, but third down conversions, they've been very successful here tonight. They spot the ball at the 20 yard line, 37-27 Omaha, 10-45 and counting here in the third quarter of play at Ralston Arena in Omaha. Ramsey throws again up the middle, looking for Gonzalez, it was incomplete. Dudley Giles on the coverage. Gonzalez thought he got there early, but no flag on the play, it'll be second down and 10. We saw a lot of success across the middle for Oklahoma in the first half. But Devin Williams was wide open in the end zone. He was looking toward the middle. Here again, the guys sitting and waiting. But kind of targeting that area occupied by Des Bryant, or excuse me, Des Reed in the, in the middle of the field as this one's complete across the near side. It's gonna be good for four or five. So it's gonna be another third down for Oklahoma. Tyrell Green is also in the game at defensive back. He is a new addition to Omaha secondary this week. Have not seen them try to challenge number 20 at all in this game. As he does have experience, he's played previously with Salina and throughout the league, but have not gone after him. Here's the fake and the keeper, and he gives himself early. It's going to be well short of the first down. And it's going to bring up a fourth down situation for Oklahoma. And now a decision for Oklahoma. It's a two possession game, 10 point disadvantage. And they're going to go for this fourth and long. It'll be fourth and six. And I think this is a situation where Richard Davis probably feels the momentum getting away and that they need to get more than the three here. And it is kind of a long field goal. Be about 32 yards from this point. So fourth and a long five for the defense. Men in motion, Ramsey. Watch the car, watch the car. To take a shot and it's complete just inside the 10 yard line. It's right at the first down marker, but they're telling them to move the chains. They're not even gonna measure. Marvin Jones wants a measurement. but they have instructed the chains to be moved. And uh, they're in disbelief on that. Marvin Jones may be actually asking them to challenge that spot. And here comes the flag. And they will challenge this, Kirk. Yep. You know, this is gonna be another one though, you know, we sound like we're repeating ourselves, but this is gonna come down to angle. Uh, angle again. And it's gonna be close either way. Now the interesting thing is I, I don't know if the spot really looked that bad, but uh, they're gonna review this and we'll come back, we'll take a look. While they do that, we're gonna take a quick timeout. It's 37-27 Omaha, you're watching Omaha Beef Football. This is Omaha Beef Football Network.
back at Ralston Arena. They have concluded their review and decided that they were correct in awarding the first down to Oklahoma, as we discussed. Probably gonna be a tough challenge to win, and uh, they did not. That'll be the first time out. Charge to Omaha in the second half as they uh, also lose their first challenge. End result, first down and 10. It's right at the 10 yard line. It'll actually be first and goal as Oklahoma tries to claw back, trailing by 10. This one handed off, tackled in the backfield. Nice job by the Omaha defensive line. Xavier Pegas, among others, in the, Cuba. the pile. Robert Cuba. Loss of two yards will make it second down and goal to go from 12 yards out. Halfway through the third quarter. Oklahoma on their first possession of the second half. 10 on the play clock. As they break the huddle down to five, they're gonna have to hurry. Three, two, one, that's a zero, and there's the flag. So add a delay of game now. We'll back them up another five yards. And it'll be second down and goal from 17 yards out now. So big penalty on Oklahoma backs them up five yards as they had some trouble breaking that huddle and getting the play in. Try it again as the clock reaches seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Breaking the huddle again at 10 seconds, Kirk. Down to five, and Omaha, a little confused on defense it looks like, plays at zero. They're gonna let him play this time as that one is complete down to the six yard line. Gain of 11 on the completion to Gonzalez. It's be third down and goal. Omaha has definitely had better field position tonight than in both of their first two contests. As they feel like they've been in the Omaha end of the field quite a bit here tonight. Stats aren't up to date, so we can't give you exact numbers on those, but here's third and goal. Ramsey, complete, near the goal line. Oh. It's gonna be just short as he finds Williams. Williams had a thought about trying to stretch that ball over, but there was pressure on him. He wasn't able to do it while protecting it. And it's gonna bring up a fourth and goal from a yard out. Big play coming up for the Omaha defense. You can hear the crowd getting loud here at the slaughterhouse. And it's fourth down and goal. Oklahoma trails by 10, short yardage package in. He'll go under center, you see the fullback. Leans forward and he didn't get it. No. He did not get it. The defense is held. Whoa, the big bodies came in and they tried to reach across and they won that battle at the line of scrimmage and Richard Davis is in disbelief. Wow, what a stand for Omaha. We've seen them do it before too. Games pass, they get it down there and they just fuck it up. Omaha defense rejects the flying aces and keeps the 10 point lead with 5-11 remaining here in the fourth quarter. We'll be right back, you're watching. Omaha Beef Football on Pluto TV. This is Omaha Beef Football Network.
Welcome back to Rawls Arena, Prairie Flower Casino Field. Omaha holds on downs at the goal line. They move it out to the five yard line. They'll start their drive here in the third quarter trying to add and they throw it to Raspberry. Donovan Raspberry good for six yards out to the 11 yard line, be second down and four. First catch by Raspberry tonight. Two seconds left in Salina and the Liberty are out in front of the Bandits, 57-54. We'll wait for that to go final as Omaha runs hurry up and Bernard will keep it. He has a first down, he has the 20 and a couple more. Pick up of a dozen for Derek Bernard and move the chains for Omaha. Well, we were just talking during the break, Kirk. It seemed like it was time for Omaha could put up a touchdown right here, might really take control of this game. Something they've had some difficulties doing coming out of the locker room. We've discussed that. They're looking to change that. Deep ball, Derek wide down. open, yes. complete touchdown, Omaha. Derek Bernard finds Donovan Raspberry. And the beef strike again, and the lead is 16. That was the guy they did pick it to tonight, cut the ball. What a play, Derek Bernard, play action. Throws downfield, finds Donovan Raspberry. Let's take a look at that again, and wide open, beats the defenders. And Omaha strikes on touchdowns, back-to-back -back drives to open the second half, low snap. Kick is up and it is good. And with 4.16 remaining in the third quarter, Omaha all of a sudden is up by 17 points. As they are up 44 to 27. Kirk, we talked about, we talk about all the time because we just talk all the time, but we talked with the coaches, staff during the week, and something that's been ongoing is we haven't really seen a complete four quarters of play out of this team no, yet. No. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's coming out of the gate in the first quarter, sometimes it's coming out of the locker room in the third quarter. But so far, we, we saw them start pretty good. Uh, they were in a gun battle, back and forth scoring, but second half coming out strong as well. And now, looks like they've taken some control of this game. Yeah, and you don't, you know, you don't know what they say at halftime. Sometimes it's, you know, get it in gear or whatever. Say, come on, this is what we did right. This is what we did wrong. Let's do more things right than we do wrong. Exhibition play down in Albuquerque. I guess they didn't really want to play that game. Start of the fourth quarter. Duke City out in front of North Texas. 109 to 6, Kirk. Oh, my. Mercy. <laughs> yeah, there's got to be. Still waiting for... Uh, Score to go final in Salina. But well, we got a good one here tonight, too. Salina in Sioux City, two seconds left. We've been waiting. You wonder why it's held in at two seconds. Things are never easy in the CIF in those close games at the end. Wait for that to go final. That's Omaha's opponent a week from tonight down in Salina. Are you going down, Kirk? Yeah, you could go. You could ride down with me? Okay. You don't mean that. <laughs> we'll find out. Somebody will be there. We hope you could join us. It's not a bad drive. Just about three hours to come down there. Road trip. Road trip, and it's going to be a battle for that first playoff spot in the CIF North and home field advantage more importantly. You know, there's only one round in the divisional, so that the champion's gonna host. Yep. And then the highest seed out of the two winners hosts the championship game. So all these games are important. Duke City may not know that one doesn't count though. Because they're up 109 to six. They'll go down as a two nothing forfeit over the Texas Revolutions tonight. We're back to action, Oklahoma. And there's a kick right at the goal line. Get him, get him, it's fielded it all. out to the 10. There you go. And there's good coverage. Calvin is down there to make the stop. Now there's a flag. Now what's that for? Uh, we see some John again. 
Let's go down to Vernon for the call. Discussion going too. That's never good, Kirk. No, it isn't. You know, it's sometimes too. They've got to take control of things. Say, come on. You know, enough's enough. Ah. So good kick by Zeke. A coverage, but a uh, personal foul. Unsportsmanlike conduct's gonna add 15 yards, and boy, there's another one of those. We saw one in the first half, too. I mean, uh, you know, you don't want those, to say the least. No. So after the penalty, they're gonna spot this at the 21-yard line of Omaha. Actually, they're going to spot at the 24-yard line once they get their math together. And Oklahoma really now is a must-execute drive as they find themselves trailing by 17. And how quickly this turned, Marvin Jones, James Kerwin still looking for more explanation on that. But but you, you know what? You can't you can't do those. You just can't things. do it. That's not that's not smart play. It's you know. Oklahoma trailing by three at the half, They've given up 17, but they got down to the goal line. One yard out, could not convert. That's really a pivotal point in this contest right now. Ramsey, he wants to throw. It's complete. No, actually loses the handle as he tries to find Gonzalez. And it'll be second down and 10. and a half to go here in the third quarter. Another play that you're looking for the short, you know, the short pass and the catch and run. Uh, they ran the, ran the wide receiver deep and this guy just stood and waited. Empty set, wide out on each side in motion. Ramsey will drop. This one's complete. Oh, hit immediately. Whoa, push backwards, tries to reestablish himself. And what a huge hit. Coming in from number three, Chris Perry. Not only knocked him backwards, backwards, but knocked him backwards far enough they reestablished himself. He would have got forward progress, but instead it goes down as a three-yard loss because of a huge hit yeah. by Chris yeah. Perry. Man, he hit him hard. It's gonna be third down and 14. Big play coming up. You have to look at number eight. Torrance Carr lining up against the wall. Nearly offside, so they'll go deep for Carr. There he is. Oh, it's off his hands. Wide open. And that will be a drop, as that should have been six points for Oklahoma. And instead, it's going to be fourth down and 14. Carr wants that one back. Boy, he got the bump against, against the defender. And Broke it across the middle, wide open. You called that before the play. We've seen him get loose a couple times up that board and get behind the defense. He did right there, but he couldn't bring it in. Fourth down and 14, Omaha up by 17, trying to get the ball back. Same thing. Obviously going to throw, they'll go thing. to the other side. This time it's complete, and it's a first down. Down to the six-yard line in a big completion from Ray John Ramsey to Gonzalez. They needed 14. They got 20. And it's going to be first down and goal for Oklahoma. Omaha 
has held a few times inside the five yard line tonight. Right now it's at the six. This is something that uh, Omaha defense has been known to do is turning offenses away from this position. But this time, nice dancing move by Ramsey. He almost rolled in, but they're gonna mark him down at the one yard line. It's gonna be second down and goal. Second down and goal, one yard out. Ramsey out of the gun in the short yardage package, full back in. They'll try to no. stuff it up the middle. He will not get it, but a flag came out. I think this is gonna be a legal defense on Omaha. the one it's gonna be a half the distance penalty they'll move it just inside the one 10 seconds to go we'll see if they get the snap off before the quarter ends short yardage or the goal line package in once again they'll take the snap bobbled and hand it off and he's into the end zone for a touchdown as time expires here in the third quarter and Oklahoma is still alive Uh, Corey Avery with his first touchdown as he throws the ball back towards the coach and there is a flag on this play so an extensive celebration we'll see if it if it stands as the talking continues between these two ball clubs Calls on Reed, another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Omaha. That's a third against Omaha defense in this game. And that will go after the kickoff, so it will back up. Omaha, when they get the ball back, it'll be 15 yards. Penalty forthcoming. They've gone final in Salina. The Liberty defeat the Bandits tonight, 57-54. They take sole possession of second place in the CIF North, and they will be the opponent for Omaha a week from tonight. As they will battle for that top spot in the North. Omaha with the win against Oklahoma tonight and a win against the Lina would be in pretty good shape. Okay, yeah. First business is here. An extra point to end the third quarter. Mathis puts his right foot into it. The kick is up, and it is good. And three quarters are in the book. It's here at well, another flag. We're going to have more talk. And we got the kicker talking. Never, never want kicker talking. But we'll see what we got here. We'll check in. So another personal foul against the defense. So two of them will be assessed after the kickoff, which will be 30 yards. We'll come back and see how that turns out. We'll take a timeout. You're watching Pluto TV. This is Oma B Football Network.
Welcome back to Ralston Arena. Traditional uh, fourth quarter handshakes going on between uh, Omaha and Oklahoma. Don't take your helmet off over there. Tell you there. what, uh, you, you can see the, the teams, actually you can't, but uh, teams became heated there between the quarters and being broken up, both benches actually emptied. And uh, two personal fouls already are on Omaha before this kick, but we saw the head coaches going at it even. Richard Davis and James Kerwin, along with the players. And uh, no additional flags have been thrown, but this thing's gonna get ugly, Kirk. We've seen it going in that direction. And we've seen uh, the officials try to control this thing, but they, they have not yet. Not at all. So we still see the coaches discussing it. But uh, it's been a while since we've seen this kind of action uh, in these games. We'll see if there's any additional penalties, but Omaha believes they're getting slighted, I believe, with the, the unsportsmanlike conduct penalties coming against Omaha only. But we've been seeing talking going the entire time. And uh, again, it's just something you don't want to see, obviously, Kirk. Not at all, not at all. Or maybe you do, I don't know. Well, <laughs> you know, and I don't know, is this, is this a carryover for what happened the first two games against these two? You never know, but there's got so many new people on each side. Yeah, you, you would think that there's enough new blood that uh, some of this would uh, not be carrying over, but the officials are still discussing this, and. I don't believe there's any additional penalties, but if you're just joining us, two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties were called on Omaha during the extra point and the in the touchdown. So there's 30 yards still coming against Omaha. What happens if we run it back? I don't know. I get <laughs> uh, or it's going to be a couple uh, half the distance penalties. Anyways, it's a mess right now. But, uh, you know, the officials are trying to figure out how to get control of this game again. And when you see not just the players, but coaches out there going at it, uh, we've well, got a, a situation that's not ideal, obviously. Yeah, Coach Davis over here, too. We had that unsportsmanlike like when he was John with, uh, I don't even remember who it was, but. Well, they I called mean, Calvin Phillips, but I believe it's yeah. Javon Bell who actually uh, committed the penalty, talking with players at halftime. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's a, a again an example of a penalty that went against Omaha. Not sure if they were right or wrong. Not arguing that, but just saying that. I think Omaha's feeling that they're getting the, the brunt of of this control that the officials are trying to take. So we're waiting to get the fourth quarter underway still. We've seen the referee have one-on-one -on -one conferences, first with Richard Davis, the head coach of Oklahoma. Vernon Brakefield is now having a discussion one-on-one -on -one with the head coach of Omaha, James Kerwin. Uh, we saw them going toe-to-toe -to -toe during the timeout as well while the bench is emptied. I'm not sure, I assume this is just behave for 15 more minutes conversation and reminder the owner of the beef is the commissioner of the league as well so uh, I'm sure this will be a, <laughs> a situation that gets reviewed throughout throughout the week coming up Still have ongoing discussion. Yeah, what happens? What happens if they try an onside kick? Well, it's not they the worst play right now. No, because it's going to back you up 30. 30. And I'm not sure why you wouldn't do that. And I think we're going to have an ejection.
So if you, uh, three players, three players were just ejected for Omaha. Desmond. Kwame Bell, Desmond Reed, and Trey Dudley Giles, all on defense, all ejected from this game. And that's why uh, they called that they had all had unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. They basically, I guess, are calling unsportsmanlike conduct on everybody here on out. Called that their second. And then said if anybody else gets one, it's their second, they're out. So I guess in essence, Kirk, they just called unsportsmanlike conduct penalties on every player and called them all offsetting. Would that be fair to say? And those yeah. were their second for those three. Three B players have been ejected defensively to start the fourth quarter of play. Wow. Yes. And not minor players. Kwame Bell no. starting defensive lineman, Desmond Reed, the linebacker, exactly. and Trey Dudley Giles starting defensive back. As you mentioned, Hans team are coming out on the return for Omaha as they are expecting them to attempt. Why not? Yeah. Trailing. Uh, and even if they recover, it's going to back them up 30 yards. So a crazy situation to start the fourth quarter here at the Slaughterhouse. You only have 21 active players to begin with. Three are gone. You're down to 18. So we're going to watch Mathis as we expect him to try to keep us on the ground for an onside. And then, of course, he kicks it downfield. And we've got a whistle to blow this off. This is an official's whistle. And he called it on the on himself. There's no stoppage. It was an official stoppage for no reason. They're going to set it up and start over again. So back them all up. It's been a while since we've played. Well, they woke the fans back up here at Prairie Flower Casino Field. We'll see if they elect to try the onside this time or if they do the same. Math is up against the wall. We'll see where he puts the ball. He's going to go downfield again. Bray's down there by himself. He's going to have some room. Here he goes, the 5, the 10. Uh-oh. Cuts back to the 10, the 15, the 20. Sees a lane. Gets back to midfield. And we've got another helmet. As Sleepy Williams gets into it and has a helmet ripped off, a flag comes out. And uh, this one should be a personal foul on Oklahoma. Now remember, there's two penalties still coming on Omaha. We're going to have to do some math to reconcile this. Well, 30 minus 15, 15 maybe, huh? Maybe. But are they half the distance first? I don't know. Probably the ugliest five minutes of football that, that we I've have seen, seen in quite some time. Going back to the uh, Lincoln Haymakers uh, game six years ago here. We had a coach tackle a player. That was fun. Got a throwback R. J. Saturday. Rollins. Got R.J. Rollins. He clotheslined him. So somehow, Sleepy Williams had his helmet ripped off and he gets a personal foul as well. So a total of four personal fouls, three on Omaha, one on Oklahoma will be assessed at this point. When you do all the math, the ball's at the six yard line. Now we just gotta outscore him. <laughs> now you gotta outscore him. You know, that's it. Back to the actual game, Omaha is out in front by 10. 44-34, 14-48 remaining here in the fourth quarter. And boy. Six and one against one and six, and this game is officially ugly. B. 
people finally start the drive for the fourth quarter. Well, now we got another whistle. Why not? Got to set the ball girls back up in the right spot. Here we go. Omaha. First offensive drive, we got whistles. I don't see a flag, Kirk. So let's see what the whistle's for. And it was just another official stoppage. No penalty, we'll bring it back. Finally, first down, six yard line. Bernard to Bray, complete. Out to the 13 yard line, that's good for seven. It's gonna be second down and three. Omaha could use a nice, long, time consuming drive that results in points and move on to next week. Back on the ball, second down and three. Empty backfield for Bernard. Complete to Javon Bell into Oklahoma territory. Down to the 23 yard line. Good for a first down. Be first to 10. Chuck Wright running tempo for the beef with the 10 point lead. Bernard drops back, not a lot of pressure on first down, wants to go downfield, has a man, and it's Clint Solomon into the boards. It's a touchdown for Omaha, and that's how the Beef are going to respond with a touchdown to Solomon. But are there any flags on the play? No. They got a player down. Another player down. It's an Oklahoma player. Coverage and Solomon going into the boards on that play, but Solomon, his second touchdown of the night, puts Omaha to the 50 point mark. So a stoppage while we uh, tend for the injured player. And you know, Kirk, when they went into the wall, I. You heard a thud, I thought it was Solomon, but now uh, it, it's on our side, so we can't get a clear view of what happened, but uh, the two bodies went in hard. We're gonna take a look at this again. Uh, well, it looked like Solomon got the most of that one. Can't really see what happened there. Yeah, it looked like his head snapped back against the board, but I just tossed the back end of that. Thirteen thirty six remaining here in the fourth quarter of play and uh, tending to the injured flying ace, it looked like looked like as Ivan King on the coverage. King is up, and he's going to be helped off the field. And now a penalty flag comes out right now. Was that thrown right now, Kirk, or are they just throwing it out on the field so you can see it? Or he just drop it? I don't know. <laughs> I think he just lost control of his flag. He must just got used to Maybe he throwing it. Yeah, blew his nose. He may have. Put it back in his pocket. He should have kept it there most of the damn game. Excuse me. <laughs> well, we know how Kirk Heyer feels. It's 50 to 34 <laughs> Omaha. You if just want to get to the firewire. True that. But if you could tell them a good game, you can also tell them they did a I crummy suppose, game, right? I suppose that's fair. We wait the extra point. Ari Valo in for the extra point. Kick is up, and it's off the upright. 
And the lead will stand at 16, which is, by the way, still a two possession game with the two point conversion possibilities. And we got more join. 1336 <laughs> from the end. Omaha out in front, 50 to 34. Reminder, beef fans, if you're watching, join us at the Fire Water Bar and Grill post game party after tonight's contest. It's at 73rd and Grover Street. And if Omaha continues in the lead, the beer cooler will be open. 50 free beers right now. The number of points Omaha scores will be awarded in free beers. And that's uh, and they're supplied. We took some there the other day. <laughs> and they're full, 50 points, 50 beers. May not be the last of the scoring. So 13.36 remaining here, fourth quarter. As uh, we've reached 10 o'clock here in the central time zone. It's been some long games at Ralston Arena this year. This one, no exception. Gonzalez back deep, awaits the kickoff from Omaha. Oklahoma obviously could use a big return here. It's gonna be a bouncing ball. It'll be picked up by Gonzalez at the four, out to the 10, cuts back at the 15, has some room to the 20, out to the 23 yard line at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Well, we've got three defensive linemen, because we've got four. Good start. Middle linebacker is going to be the problem. Kwame Bell, Desmond Reed, and Trey Dudley-Giles all ejected to start the fourth quarter. And uh, not a lot of depth, as we mentioned, only 21 men on the roster, so Omaha definitely playing shorthanded at this point. We'll see if Omaha can take advantage. First down, they go to that left side. There's nobody there. That might have been a breakdown due to Trey Dudley-Giles being out. And it'll be first down and goal at the nine-yard line. Tyrell Green was on the coverage. But a big game for Omaha on first down. It's a two possession game if you factor in two point conversion possibilities. 50 to 34, under 13 to go. Oklahoma definitely in a must score position. Ramsey wants to throw, pump fakes, and it's off the hands and incomplete. Torrance Carr had it in his bread basket, could not bring it in. It's second down and goal. Second and goal from the nine yard line. Oklahoma will go into another bye week. Well, I take that back. They'll be playing an exhibition game against North Texas next weekend in Enid. As this one is complete right across the middle and that's where we talked about the linebacker Des Reed would have been. That's a touchdown for Oklahoma. And obviously Oklahoma should be going for two here to try to make this an eight point game. Yeah. Oklahoma trying to make it an eight point game with 11.55 remaining in regulation. And instead they're gonna kick to make it a nine point game. This would make no sense as two eights would tie it but I guess they're not going to chase the points here. Instead, they make it a nine-point game, and I think that's a break for the beef. Yeah, you know, but offensively, we've been scoring fast. Gives the defense no time for rest. And it is that we just, we got to outscore them. Just. So it's a track meet here in the fourth quarter. 
50 to 41 as we take a timeout. Oklahoma really looked like that they were able to go down the field easily with the defensive ejections that Omaha suffered to start the quarter and definitely maybe exposed them a couple times. Definitely on that touchdown pass right across the middle. That's where the starting linebacker who was ejected would have been located. Oh, yes, absolutely. It's so to lose three players. That's a lot. That caliber. That's that's yeah. That's it's, nearly almost half your defense. Yeah. And uh, and actually our best defensive players. Omaha would be smart at this point to probably not run tempo offensively and try to shorten this game up with the shorthanded defense. See if they can assist them. Mathis will line it up outside the hash marks. Again, you got to always watch out for an onside kick. Oklahoma did drop one on Omaha down in Enid to start the second half. There it is right there. And uh, it's tipped up, and Sleepy Williams makes him pay for that decision as he falls on it in the end zone, and the Beef get the touchdown to go up by 15. Oklahoma, we knew they could go for the onside kick we were talking about, but all their personnel was on the other side. Mathis tries to just tap it and field it himself and catch him off guard, but he didn't even get that to go the 10 yards. Sleepy Williams jumped on it and finishes it off before the score. Big play for Omaha on special teams, even more importantly. And we got a penalty. Never mind. So I think what he's saying is they'll decline that penalty. Yes. So legal touching. A felony in some parts of the country. Here, just a five-yard penalty is declined. And the extra point is up, and it Boom. is good, yeah. and it's 57-41, and those beers are racking up at the firewater if Omaha can hang on. Eleven fifty-one remaining here in regulation. The Beaver out in front by 16. We're going to take a quick timeout. You're watching Omaha Beef Football on the Omaha Beef Football Network. Back at Ralston Arena, fourth quarter action, Omaha out in front by 16. This one's building at the six yard line, out to the 20 and brought down. And Oklahoma finds themselves trailing by 16 again, 11.43 remaining in the game. And once again, we'll see the shorthanded Omaha defense.
Start the clock. Sleepy Williams lining up at that linebacker position, which is out of position for him, vacated by the ejection of Des Reed. And they'll go right up that middle, and it's incomplete. Josh Stewart, who's been quiet since the big first quarter, was intended receiver. And we see in the backfield, it's actually Javon Bell playing defensive back for Omaha, coming over from the offense. To assist as we talked about Omaha being shorthanded. Here's the pass, it's incomplete. They are targeting that middle though. Trying to make Omaha make a play. They had good pressure up the middle. Correction, that's not Javon Bell over there. I can't see the number, but. It is Javon Bell. Yeah. Third down and 10 for Omaha. Good, 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 Here comes good, the good, pressure. Good. Ramsey has to roll out. By some time, completes the pass. It's only gonna be a gain of about one. And it's be fourth down for Oklahoma, and they're gonna have to go for it as we're under 10 minutes to go in regulation. Good pressure from the defensive line. Boy, I'd stop here, it'd be great. Devon Bell playing the safety position, getting instruction from Chris Perry before every play. Helping a short-handed Omaha defense. They're kicking, they're going to kick. And Mathis is gonna try to kick this. Now he's been good for up to 49 yards this year. This could be about 43 yards as a spot at the 14 yard line. So make it a 13 point game. Here's the kick, it's got enough leg it looks like. And I believe it's good, and it is. That's all right if we can trade touchdowns for field goals. So Brett Mathis with a strong leg, good from 43 yards out. And it's 57 to 44 with under nine minutes to go. said trading touchdowns with field goals. It's a 13 point game. You wonder if Omaha or if Oklahoma will try another onside kick. Or at the very least try to do some sort of a, a short squib to get in the field of play to see if they can try to force an extra possession. Been a clean game as far as turnovers go. We've only seen the one interception that Derek Bernard threw back early in the first half. No turnovers for Oklahoma, which is a, a big deal for them. And there haven't been too many games where Oklahoma's been on the plus side of the turnover battle this year. They break the huddles and come back on the field. 8.54 remaining, fourth quarter of play, 57 to 44. Omaha trying to secure their seventh victory of the season to move to seven and one, maintain a two game advantage in the CIF North over Salina now, who defeated Sioux City tonight. Have a three game lead over Sioux City that's a big game. It's going to be tough for Sioux City to climb back into this. But Salina 
will be the opponent of Omaha for two of the next three contests. So they play him two out of the next three, but they could see him also two weeks after that in the playoffs, depending on how this falls. So we're going to get to know the Salina Liberty here over the next few weeks. Mathis lines up outside of the hash marks again. We'll see if he tries to do something cute here on kickoff again. And it's a little squib. It's popped up and fielded by Bell. He's in midfield. Oh, and he's hit high. That needs to be a flag. And it's not. Boy, it was. It was targeting. He hit him right in the gizzle. Well, he didn't hit him with the helmet, but he hit the shoulder pad right into the face mask. Got flag at the line of scrimmage. Oklahoma may have been off sides. So off sides on Oklahoma. They'll add that to the end of the run. And Omaha will have good field position. As they'll spot the ball at the 10 yard line of the Flying Aces. Now I thought that was a five yard penalty. Did he get down to the 15? I thought he was down to the 20. But they marked 10 off. That's what Richard Davis is wondering. But Omaha will take it as the clock continues to run. Whoa, ball snap. Bernard did not know. Bernard needs to run, he'll throw it away. And that was an errant, errant snap that was almost disaster for Omaha. But Bernard was able to recover and get that ball out of play. Second down and 10. eight minute mark left here in regulation. Ball at the 10 yard line of Oklahoma. Men in motion. Let's see a run. Hand off to Bray. Bray tries to find the gap. Has to bounce back around. And he's tackled for a loss of two as the clock continues to run. It'll be second down and goal from the 12 yard line. Or make a third down and goal. Derek Bernard gets the call from offensive coordinator Chuck Wright. Deliberately using some clock. Ten minutes left on the play clock as we approach the seven minute mark. But Omaha needs some more points right here. They'll go for the end zone and it's complete. Javon Bell with the touchdown and another six pack on the board as Omaha is out in front 63 to 44. Boy. We got two receivers that are money, man. You talk about that acquisition of Clinton Solomon. We know what a player he is, but that also just opens up yeah. opportunities for the other receivers as who are you going to cover? Yeah, pick your poison. So 63-44, our Valo will come in to try and make it a 20-point contest. Placement down, the kick is up, and it is good. 6.57 remain. We're going to take a quick timeout. We'll be right back. This is Omaha Beef Football Network.
Back at Ralston Arena, final seven minutes of regulation as the Beef are out in front, 64 to 44, bounce, bouncing bounce. kick. And they field it, Stewart at the 12, out to the 20, cuts back, gets to midfield, he's into Beef territory, finally stacked up at the 21 yard line. Free possession game, but Oklahoma's still fighting. We didn't get that last big bounce. And Adam Pabbitt just looking to field for flags after every play now. None on the on the field. And they'll spot it at the 22-yard line. First down and 10 for Oklahoma. Nearly off sides, Ramsey complete to Gonzalez. He takes it down to the nine yard line of Omaha where he's tackled by Javon Bell, who's going old school and playing both ways tonight. Gets a tackle after a touchdown on the last drive. Be first down and goal for Oklahoma. Oklahoma needs points and they need them quick as we're under six minutes to go. First and goal from the nine yard line. Here's Ramsey, tries to force it in. The ball's complete. Another flag on the play. I think we're gonna have a hold against Oklahoma. We'll see if this comes back. Ah, they got one right. 10 yard penalty will negate we got the one catch right. and back him up. They'll make it first and goal from the 19 yard line. They spot at the 19, it'll be first down and goal. They'll replay the down. Five and a half to go. Can we speed up the clock somehow? My goodness. Stewart lines up in the backfield with Ramsey. They hand it off to Stewart. He finds a seam, 15, 10, five touchdown. So Oklahoma's still alive as they score to make it a 14 point game. With 5.06 remaining here in regulation. Send out the kicking team. Try to make this a 13 point game. Oklahoma does have two timeouts remaining, so does Omaha. Good clean snap. The kick is up, and Mathis is good once again. We'll tell you on special teams, that long snap, they, they have perfect snaps on the Oklahoma side. Yes, they do. None of them have really been questionable tonight. And Mathis has been automatic in the kicking game. As it's once again a two possession game. 64 to 51. 115 points put on the board tonight. One is the second most points Omaha has given up this season. Second only to the 55 that they gave up to Oklahoma in the opening week here at Ralston Arena. Well above the 34 points per game that Omaha had defensively achieved coming into tonight. Again, Omaha expecting Oklahoma to try some sort of short kickoff to see if they can 
to come up with a recovery. Sleepy Williams will line up right in front of the kicker. Kane Parkerson and Chris Perry are up close as well with a couple linemen. Braves back deep if Oklahoma elects to, to go there. They try the onside again. Oh, and we have a flag. They're going to be offsides. Then they close line Chris Perry. We got the block. We got the ball, though. And Omaha ends up with the ball. But we have flags where the hit was. We have flags at the line of scrimmage. These are going to be two separate infractions, I believe. But I believe they're both against Oklahoma. But we're never ball, sure. Yes, and we did, the ball didn't go 10 yards. Either. And the ball didn't go 10 yards. So we're going to have a legal but touch in there. An illegal touch, but we received, we got the ball on a recovery. So we'll see what they come up with. The discussion continues. Ignore the second flag, I guess, which was likely an illegal touching. And final summary, Omaha gets the ball, a half the distance to the goal award, and it'll be first to goal from the three-yard line. Five minutes to go here in Omaha, 13-point game. Full house backfield for the beef. Raspberry and Bell in motion. Here's the fake. Bernard will take it himself. Touchdown, Omaha. And for the second time in as many weeks, Omaha has hit the 70 point mark. Beef victorious a week ago at Wichita, 70 to 33, in their highest point output of the year. Omaha is going to have a chance to surpass that with the extra point by Zeke Arivalo. It'll be a 20-point advantage for Omaha with 444 remaining on the clock. Snap is down, kick is up, and it is good. 71 beers at the Firewire. Whoa, it's going to be a... Uh, Let's hope for a good kickoff to make them go the long field. Though. I hope they're still open by the time we get over there. Join us, 73rd and Grover, as we've hit 10.30 Central Time. Oh, no. My kids are still here, too. They're going to be crabby tomorrow. <laughs> Go home, go to bed. I might be crabby tomorrow. You're gonna be you're always crabby. <laughs> 20 point advantage for Omaha. And well, this game is uh I think we can officially classify this one as ugly. Uh very competitive first half. Omaha and Oklahoma traded scores back and forth. It's a three-point game at the intermission, but Omaha took charge in that third quarter and then really has controlled it ever since. We talked about Omaha trying to play a complete game, four quarters. Probably did that outside of the personal fouls, and now we're going to have a situation with the ejections and, and uh, wherever that goes beyond this week. Players of the Omaha defense ejected at the beginning of the fourth quarter. This is kind of it's kind of like the NASCAR with the you know the, the fender falling off, the duct tape still crossing the finish line. As Omaha tries to close out victory number seven of the 2019 season, Zeke puts it into the end zone oh, right off the ball. wall. Good, good, good. I thought good, that good. was dead, but it's not. 
and it's fielded. And another helmet comes off as Sleepy Williams as it's fielded out to the 19-yard line. Thought the wall was out of play. It hit, well, it hit right at the base. I mean, that's what they're trying to do. Right. Um. Oh, well. We'll look that up. Clock runs. Page three, the, sub, subsection two or something the, like that. For the it? rule junkies out there, <laughs> a good clarification. Oklahoma will start at the, their own 18-yard line. We approach the four-minute mark, 20-point game. Ramsey wants to get another score complete up against the board to Gonzalez out near midfield. They'll spot it at the 25. He's second down and three. Oklahoma taking their time. I think reality is set in that this will not be the night for their first field victory as we're at the three and a half minute mark. Ramsey would like to get another score though as he completes inside the 10 yard line. That's Carr once again. Over the middle. Right against the middle. Roma is uh, had to make some adjustments. Sleepy Williams has moved over to the linebacker position and Javon Bell has come over from offense to play safety. Ramsey wants to throw. Good play. Tried that middle again. Chris Perry came in to break it up. Under three minutes to go, second and goal. Let that clock run. Largest point output for Omaha offense this year, 71 points. Second most points given up by Omaha this year. Again, second only to Oklahoma in week one when they gave up 55. Low snap, here's the pass, it's off the mark, it's incomplete. Be third down and goal as we approach two minutes. Omaha travels down to Salina, Kansas a week from tonight take on the four and or the five and three Salina Liberty battle between number one and number two in the CIF North Division first of two matchups in the regular season between those two teams here's get him, get him, get him, get him. And goal pressure out of play it's incomplete good pressure Robert Cuba yeah. In on the play, and it's be fourth and goal as the clock, I think, will run down to the one-minute one minute warning. warning. Sixty seconds to go here at Prairie Flower Casino Field at Ralston Arena. Omaha looking to move to seven and one. Their best start since 2013, when they finished the season ten and two regular season. And uh, not a whole lot to say about this one. Could you say we got homered at home? Could you could you say that? Do you feel that? There's a there's some things to sort out when it comes to the penalties and uh, possible uh, ramifications from those personal fouls. Uh, exactly what went down there. That will be uh, for the league to figure out during the week exactly what happened, where to go with that. Oklahoma, as we mentioned, they will host an exhibition contest against North Texas. Next weekend at Enid, Oklahoma, as they will officially get their second win of the season due to forfeit. 
to move to two and seven. Then they host Duke City, Sioux City, and then go to Amarillo to close out their season. Three tough CIF contest to try to get that elusive first CIF victory. Well, they're definitely a lot better team than they have been. Very much so. Omaha moves to seven and one, but the naysayer out there would point out only one win against the team with a winning record when they played them. That'd be the win against Texas, which ended their franchise on April 27th. 47-34 victory over the Revolution. Four weeks ago here at Ralston Arena, Revolution came into that game 4-0. Final four games of the season, forthcoming for Omaha. All teams with winning records in playoff hopes as they move forward. So we'll see where Omaha stands for the stretch run. Back to this, 60 seconds. Fourth and goal, nine yards out. 20 point game. Omaha trying to put the icing on the cake. Four receivers set. Ramsey nope. throws too high and it's no good. And the defense has held and Omaha will get it back to run the clock out. Fifty-five seconds to go. A couple of runs and Omaha should have this one in the books. Second week in a row scoring 70 plus points. We've seen that offensive production continuously improve week after week. Uh, definitely a good sign for Omaha. Probably played their most complete game of the season outside of the obvious uh, penalty situation and we got another whistle for no reason not ready so we'll set it back up and go again after the official whistle we'll try first down again Gray in the backfield with Bernard. They hand it off to him. Gets a few yards. We'll keep the clock running. As he gets out to the 11-yard line, and Oklahoma's going to use one of the remaining two timeouts. It stops the clock at 44 seconds. Preparing for that epic 20-point comeback. They've got one left. Delaying the inevitable in the party at the Firewater Grill, 73rd and Grover Street, the beer keg appears to be on its way to being opened up and fully stocked. 71 beers get down there and take advantage of that as Omaha Beef hope to celebrate their seventh victory. Have a little fellowship, you know. And the officials want to put some more time back on the clock, it appears. And they put four more seconds back on. So we're back to 48 seconds. Line up on second down and eight. They'll keep it on the ground again to Bray. Bray finds some room, moves forward. They'll keep the clock running. And Oklahoma will use their third and final timeout. They must like it here. They don't want to go home. 42 seconds to go. Omaha has two timeouts, obviously will not use them. Those bus rides after a loss, are ter yeah, those are bad. They are, that's true. 
Haven't had one this year. No. Had a car ride. But not a bus but ride. But it was short. It, it was, was shorter. Short. That's short car ride, preferable to long bus ride. Yeah. Any day, win or loss. Third down and four. Omaha pick up four yards. It'll be all over. Bernard. He wants to make them pay for taking those timeouts. He finds Kane Parkinson down inside the 10, complete. But there's a flag back in the line of scrimmage, go figure. Got a hold. They call a hold against Omaha, so they'll bring it back. Thirty-three seconds remaining. Third down and fourteen. Another stoppage for Whistle. Oh, didn't do their math wrong. Half the distance. Now it's at the 12. Third down still. Bernard wants to throw again. Here comes a rush. Uh oh, running, the boys running, running, and, running. Uh, he was Ding dong him. to the house. Breaks through, loses the ball as he hits the ground, but he will be down, and that should expire the clock. As the clock will run, and mercifully, we will come to the end of this ball game. Post-game handshake should be interesting. Final seconds. Clock. Off the clock, and this one is official. Go celebrate, Pete fans. You're seven and one. The party. Off the sweep. The broom comes out. Three wins against Oklahoma. Time to celebrate at the Firewater Bar and Grill. The beer keg opens. 71 beers to be distributed. As Omaha moves to one or seven and one on the season. Oklahoma falls to one and seven. Omaha back in action a week from tonight in Salina. We will be back here in Ralston in three weeks when they also host Salina. How about that? It'll be like deja vu. Join us in Salina if you can. If not, all games on Pluto TV. Thanks for joining us tonight for Kirk Heyer, Todd Walkenor's final score. From Prairie Flower Casino Field, Omaha 71, Oklahoma 51. This has been a production of Omaha Beef Football Network. <laughs>